Enter Ron Saunders, his mission to take Norwich up into the first division. He was an uncompromising character with something of a military reputation. So what sort of squad did he find on his arrival? A mixed bunch, some good players, some not so good, and some good types of players, um, you know, as, as individuals, and some not so good types. And obviously the, the problem was to sort them out. What was the first thing you did? Sorted them out. The straight-talking Saunders set about bolstering his squad. Among the arrivals, midfielder Dougie Livermore from Liverpool, as the new city boss forged a blend of experience, flair and good old-fashioned up'em and atom, no-nonsense leadership on the pitch. Where did this phrase, keep your voice down to a roar, come from? Well, at the end of last season, we went over to Portugal uh, to play in a tournament over there, and uh, there was a Scottish team over there, Dundee, you know? And after a couple of days, they, they heard my voice, and somebody was shouted out the window to me, keep your voice down to a roar, you know, and this is, this is where it's come from. What way was the image of the club changed on the playing side? Well, I think uh, we had more determination all round, with all the players dedicated to one thing, uh, promotion. Was this a pretty painful process at times? Well, in training it was very painful, you know, we had to uh, go through a lot of hard work, you know, and uh, it was quite painful. Sheer hard work would underpin Saunders' reign, featuring the infamous bunny hop routine at Mousehold Heath. Slowly but surely, all the effort began to pay off. The 71-72 league campaign started well, 13 games unbeaten, and continued. And the flag goes up again. And on the spot, a penalty within the first minute and a half of this game. Just that little bit extra attention to put on Graham Patton. No trouble. And that surely must take a tremendous amount of pressure off this Norwich City side. Just the sort of thing they want. In the last few games they've put a lot of pressure on sides but they haven't been able to get that early breakthrough. But now from Graham Patton's spot kick, just over two minutes on the clock. Payne pumping it up to the two men up front, Bone and Cross. Too strong by Bone, but Cross has got a lot of room to turn. Bone comes to the near post, here he is. Oh, and it's a fine header from behind him. Kenny Foggo. Sotheby in there hard. Dyson, can he turn on Forbes or set to Burns up? This is Burns. Didn't quite run for him. Got away by Payne, and here's Padden with two men free on the right. This is one of them, Ken Foggo. Bone is just inside him, but now he's marked up. Cross the far man. Cross gets up beautifully. What a brilliant goal. Well, they've shown a lot of ability in the air, and there's another one for them. And it is another goal. And this time it's Bone. Patton. Foggo given room to turn in that position, which is unusual. Now Patton with a chance to set it up on his left foot. And swinging away from the goalkeeper. Goal number five, leaving John Burridge absolutely helpless. As the end of the season approached, Norwich, Millwall and Birmingham were chasing the two promotion places. Bone is on the goal line. It's a good one from Forbes. Duncan Forbes, his first goal of the season and the big breakthrough. Yes, the City skipper making a timely return from injury and leading from the front. And it's a good one. A fine header from Forbes. Big dunk with two priceless headers in successive 1 0 wins against Sheffield Wednesday and Swindon. Two days later, City supporters travelled to Orient, knowing victory would clinch promotion. Ron Saunders sat back and watched as club history unfolded at Brisbane Road on Monday night, April 24th, 1972. Kenny Foggo and a Graham Padden penalty giving Norwich a 2-1 win, and so taking the Canaries up into the top division of English football for the first time. But there was a, a little bit of champagne brought into the to the dressing room but most of the lads refused it 
for a bit, yes. And uh, and then on the on the coach home, I think we stopped at a pub uh, on the eleven somewhere and uh, just carried on. I don't think I went to bed that night. <laughs> there was still one piece of unfinished business: the championship, secured courtesy of Dave Stringer's header in the final match of the season at Bottom Club Watford. A 1-1 draw, enough to give Norwich the first division title by just one point ahead of Birmingham. Big celebrations back at City Hall. How much does this mean to you personally? You steer the club through many crises. Well, of course, it's the uh, finality of an ambition and hard work. Uh, which I have been thoroughly happy to do and together with um, my fellow directors and many, many other people. This is a, gr a great day for 